Hello students and welcome to my course on learning the basics of front-end web development. In this course, we will cover subjects such as HTML, CSS, AngularJS routes and some other technologies. We will make our own personal website from zero to hero and we will host it on GitHub and on Firebase at the end. Now, before we begin the lesson, we need to install some tools and uh, please check if you have them installed or not. If you don't know how to install these tools, do not worry, I will go over that in the next video and after that we can uh, begin the lessons and thank you and I hope you like the course. All right, let's uh, install the necessary programs and the first program we're going to be needing is our editor. So simply type in your address bar code.visualstudio.com or type in Google search bar Visual Studio code and it will, it will be the first site. Simply download a stable build for Windows or for whatever environment you have. Then in the setup, just click next, next, next. You want this, you want this, this, and this. Next and install. And that's pretty much it for this one. After it installs, we just need to add uh, one extension to it. And the extension we're gonna be adding is live server which basically allows us when we have our HTML file to press a few keyboard buttons and they will open a server in our browser and that enables us to see the changes in our code immediately in the browser. So I clicked this button here, extensions, and just type the uh, live server, type enter, and it's the first one, it's this one. We just simply click install and that's that for the uh, editor. So the next program we need to install is called Git. Git is a system version control software for the purposes of our uh, course. We'll be using Git as a backup of sorts and I will be using it to give you the um, different branches after each lesson. And that means, for example, after we finish one lesson and we, uh, you will be able to switch to that branch and see exactly what has changed from lesson to lesson and you will have that for every single lesson and you can simply switch the branches which I will show you how to do later and you will have the whole project in one place. So uh, the first thing you need to do is simply click download for Windows, wait for it to download After it downloads, just simply click the executable. Next, next. Put it on desktop. This is fine. You don't need it. Next. Now you can just switch this editor to Visual Studio Code as default editor. Next. Uh, this is fine. Next, next, this is fine as well. Simply type, this simply go next, 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 and uh, next, and that's fine. So we basically only switched the editor of Git to Visual Studio Code. Once this installs, We're going to check the installation of it. Type in your search bar, CMD, type git version and it's installed properly. All right, the next program we're gonna be using is called GitHub Desktop and we're gonna be using it because it simplifies the use of uh, Git. Basically the way you use Git is you run commands in console for it or you use the provided tools in 
for example, Visual Studio Code, you can use that as well. But the simplest way to use Git, I find, is simply to use GitHub Desktop. It will save you a lot of time and you don't have to worry about any commands. But don't worry, I will show you later how to run commands as well. So simply type desktop github.com and download, download it for Windows. Now, uh, be aware that you will need an actual account on GitHub for this. After the installation finishes, it will ask you for your credentials. So this, uh, you, you're going to need to create an account, but which is fine. You probably already have it. There we go. Now let's see. All right, and now the GitHub desktop is installed. Simply click the sign into GitHub and uh, it will simply ask you to enter your username and password. And after that, this will be fine. All right, the next program we need to install is called NPM, Node Package Manager. So simply type NPM in your Google search bar and it will be the first thing that pops up. Click the install NPM link. Scroll down, click the download Node.js and NPM. Take the 1415 version. Simply start the installation. Click next. Accept the agreement. Next. 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 And now uh, we don't need to click this. This basically installs Python and Visual Studio build tools, but we don't need them and they take, take about four gigabytes of storage. So simply click next and install. And yes. And after it installs, we're just going to check the version and that will be that. Finish. Now in your search bar, type CMD, type node version. It's recognized, it's installed properly. Now type npm, click version, and it's installed properly. All right, the last program we need to install is called Dart SAS. Simply type that in the Google search bar. It's the first one that comes up. Now you can install this program in two ways. You can either download it from the GitHub and add it to your environmental path, or you can simply go install, scroll down, and there's the NPM codes, the program we installed a moment ago. So simply type NPM install gsas, type enter. This will globally install the SAS for you, so you can use it from anywhere. And that's that. And then you can just type SAS version, and it's installed properly. I will show the other way to install SAS as well, so uh, we can ignore this for now. So let's go to GitHub. It's this link. You basically need to go there. And you need to download the X, x64 zip file. And once that downloaded, open the file. This you need to extract. Copy it to your desktop. Now just cut that, put it in your uh, C drive. You can put it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Just paste it here. Now you need to enter this and copy this link. Now, in your in your search bar, type NVR. Actually, never mind. Uh, go to your PC, click um, Properties on an empty space. Clip, click Advanced System Settings. Uh, click the Environmental Variables. Now you have the path. Now let's see. It's this one. So if you click edit that, you see all the all the paths that were added here by other programs. And basically what this means is that uh, 
the computer this is a way the computer knows where your uh, files are located so if you type the sas version without having a path correctly installed correctly linked to it it will not know where to look for it so simply type simply click new enter your uh, enter your path click ok and that is the other way to install this program and you can run the cmd again and you can type sas and version and it will recognize it and that's pretty much it all right there is one more thing we need to do before we can start coding and it is to prepare our work area so the first thing we're going to do is create a github repository in which we're going to keep our files so the first thing we're going to do is open the application github desktop that we installed previously the first thing so click uh, file new repository name your repository whatever you like i'm just going to call it my personal website uh, you can describe it if you want it doesn't matter set the path you want to keep the local repository in i'm going to use this one this will we can add this later it's not important now create repository all right all right now that we created our repository we have this file on our computer where we saved the repository simply open the repository and now you want to open this in the visual studio code there are basically two ways to do that the first way is to type cmd in your search bar and then you type code dot and enter and this will open the visual studio code in the current folder the second way is simply to use the right click to open with code and it will do the same thing but you want to make sure that you are in this folder that has dot git that uh, shows that this folder has been initialized as a repository all right before we can start typing we need to set up the order of few files so the first file we need is called index.html and that's the main file that usually gets read by the hosting service first so right click new file let's call it index.html type hd select html5 now we need two folders first folder is going to be called scss and the second folder is going to be called style sheets now we need a terminal so select the terminal from here click new terminal and then you're going to type sas watch scss style sheets and what this is going to do is whenever we make a change in the scss folder it's going to compile that into a css file that we need we can use in our html file so the first thing we need is a file in scss and we're going to call it index.scss and it's recognized as an scss file and it's automatically compiled into an index.css file because we have this uh, watch here now we select index.html we move a line cause and we say link css now delete this it's not correct control space opens this uh, view select style sheets selects index css and that's our index file so the structure of an html file consists out of a head and a body the head usually has all the meta tags it has the links it has the scripts usually you can use scripts in the body as well but uh, well, you can do it. It's uh, not recommended. Usually, it's recommended to have everything separated and linked like this. You can, for example, have script like this, and whatever you type in between these two can be JavaScript, but it doesn't matter. For now, this is fine. I'm just gonna. This is a prepared file. It's linked to our index.css and we can start uh, coding in the next lesson just a small side note at the end of each lesson from now on you will have the files i'm working on added to the lesson you can download them and use them like that if you want and uh, after each section is finished after the initial one you will have tests to test your knowledge with and see 
what you need to improve. One last thing before we start the next lesson, we're going to push the repository to the Git. So simply select your GitHub desktop application. It now has the changed files that we added. Simply say, this is your message. The message that will be shown when you push the file. So you can say like init or whatever you like, and you can describe it if you want. This here is the initial push. And click commit to main. Now when you push the repository, you have an option. You want it private or not. If it's private only, you can see it, and the people you share the uh, access to can share it. If uh, you select it public, everybody can see it, so it's up to you. I'm going to say it private for now, but I'll change it to public later. So publish repository. Just wait a moment. There, it's done. And you can check in history that it was pushed, and now it's on the GitHub, and you can see if you reload your uh, Git page, if you're on the website, you can see the changes applied now. Welcome back. Before me, I have the uh, files we prepared in the last lesson. One thing, I have opened the live server, so any changes we make now will be immediately visible in the bottom left of your screen. Before we start, I want to say a few things about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML, you can think of as the bare bones skeleton of your website. It consists out of tags. What are tags? Well, tags are these, h1, h2, p, for example, and many others. Uh, what's important is that you know that every tag has an opening and a closing. This uh, tag is opened here, till here, and it closes here, headline is the content of the tag. This here describes this h1 tag. It tells it that it will have a class and it will have the alignment of the center. If the HTML tags are the bare bond elements of your website, then where does your content come from? Well, mainly it comes from CSS. And CSS are the cascading style sheets that uh, fill your tags with uh, style. Now you can style your tags in line like I did here. However, that is not recommended since this type of styling overrides this type of styling. This one is stronger. So it's recommended that every style be in its own separate CSS file and be implemented like that. So now that we know what HTML does and CSS does, what does the JavaScript do? Well, JavaScript implements function into the elements of your website. One last thing before we start, we will be making a single page web application. And that means that the content that we fill our index.html file will change depending on which routes we use. And the routes are basically just HTML files that will fill a certain part of our body with different content depending on which uh, element we click. And the elements we click will be the buttons that we will make. But before we do that, we need to uh, make a few HTML tags. All right, so in our HTML, we need to make a few sections. Sections are basically block elements that we can fill with other content. So let's make section. We call this one, let's just close it immediately. We call it ID header. And we can make another one, section with ID, say it's uh, body, and we close it. Now we make another one, the last one, we call it section with ID of footer, and we close it. Now we know header, we're going to need another one. We need that another block element, so we're going to use div. Div and section are pretty much the same. Section is newer, but there is really not much difference. You can say this is the header inner. And now you still don't see anything on the uh, bottom left, but that's perfectly fine because these are empty tags, ep empty elements. And uh, there's not, not uh, any CSS filling it. There's not any, not any content filling it. But we're going to do that now. So we switch over to our index.scss. And we're going to say, 
what was the name. We're going to copy this. This is the header. That's the ID. And we say hashtag ID of the element. We're going to say background color. It's going to be light blue. Now minimal height. So we can see the element is going to be 3M. And now we can see the element. Now we need the header inner. Now they call it like that, just to be sure. Yeah. Uh, we say this one is going to be 80% of the other one, so width is going to be 80% of the parent. And the reason I do this is so I can center this element. So I say margin, zero out. Now I need to get color so we can see it. It's gonna be, I don't know, light, uh, light green. Mean height, so we can, needs a height so we can see it. It's gonna inherit the height from its parent. And there's, the, there's our element. Now, We're going to give it a border. We're going to say one pixel solid black. And we're going to give the border an animation. And for that, we need another file. So we need a new file. And we're going to say this is going to be called keyframes.scss. And in our keyframes scss, we're going to call it it keyframes box shadow. Yeah, we're gonna say from zero percent it's gonna do something to actually from zero to fifty percent it does this, and from one hundred percent or from fifty to one hundred percent it does this. And what we want to do is we want to change the the color of the border, so we say border color is going to be first orange, then it's going to be orange red, and it's going to be orange again. Orange, and it needs a percentage, yeah. Now this is fine, and we remember this name. Now we go into our index.scss file. We need to move this a little bit. We need to move this, say, at import. We need to import the file we just created. And we called it keyframes. So we say import keyframes. OK. And now. Uh, we need to say animation name. Animation name is uh, box shadow. The animation duration. It's how long the animation will take to complete. Animation duration. Okay, three seconds. And iteration is the number of the animation iteration count. Is the number how many? Is the number of the times the animation will replay? And we just say. Uh, infinite. And now when we, once we save this, we can see in our bottom left that our border will have the animation and it will be changing color. Now we can give it a radius as well. We should give it a radius. Border radius, we say five, five pixels. And it's now it's nice and rounded. Now we need some buttons to fill the uh, the content of the header inner. So we go back to our index.html and we need basically, let's see how many. We need four buttons. So we say we're going to use paragraph for buttons. It really doesn't matter what you use. You can use span, you can use p, you can use button. That's a totally legitimate. 
but I want to make my own look of the buttons. So say B1, I'm just gonna B2, just gonna copy this. I'll call this one B3, B4. And we're gonna put this as well in the in its own div. So we're gonna say div. It's gonna get name of the ID buttons. Okay. 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 So we put the buttons there and we just uh, format the document. Reading the ID. We're going to call it buttons. Then we go back to our CSS, index.scss to be exact. And then we need to target the buttons, target the div that has the ID buttons. Now we're just gonna color them to make sure we got the right ones. Yes, we have. So we're gonna say white width is gonna be 80%. And that's the width of the div, not the width of the P element. Display is going to be flex, so the numbers are nice and smooshed together. The buttons, we say margin zero auto, so we can center them. Uh, now we need the PL, we center the div, not the uh, buttons. So the P element is going to have margin zero auto, and that's going to center the buttons. Yep. So it needs some margin top. It's going to be one EM, and that will move the buttons. Now we need to, um, let's give them a width. So yeah, with three EM, we're going to give them the border. No, before that, let's align them. Text, align, center. We're gonna give, we're gonna give them a border. One pixel solid black. Might as well give them a radius. Border radius five pixel. Let's uh, give them an animation as well. Let's give them a margin as well. I don't like the that the, they are so close together. So you say margin right, and we say one em. Yeah, that's better. Now we're going to give them an animation. It's going to be the same one. So we just say animation name. Box shadow. And animation duration is going to be three seconds again. And animation iteration count is going to be infinite again. So basically that gives us the uh, animation on the border of our buttons. But now I want to um, give the background color to these buttons. We're going to say black. Okay. Now I want to make it so that when we move our mouse button over the P element that it changes color. So I'm going to say add hover. We're going to open and close the brackets. 
and we're gonna say background color is gonna be orange and the color of the text is gonna be black and now let's see what happens nice now before we continue we're gonna make our own vars.css file and basically that file we will use to keep the variables in the in it in that way for example colors if we reference the same color on multiple places like a black here we can simply say in one place we want to change that color and it will all be changed there is no need to edit them individually so we're gonna do that now we're gonna say new file and we're gonna call it vars.css and the first one this is the name of the variable it's going to be called black and uh, rgb now yeah black now we need orange orange we're going to be called rgb And we need the uh, orange red. RGB. Let's change these ones first. We just copy this and we say instead of black, we say variable name. And that's black now. Of course, we need to import them first. Don't forget this like I did. We say import. We say vars. And it's fine again. So we simply copy this. We add the black this one we're gonna say orange red is gonna be orange red let's check it yes orange This is all fine, background color. This one we can remove, it's not necessary anymore. This is comment. Hmm. We can name this one specifically. And I say some color, doesn't matter which color. So I can use the color picker and I'll pick another color. I'll pick, I don't know, let's see. I will pick this color. And that's going to be our background color for the header. So we replace this with the variable. Hmm. And now it works magic. 
Now we're gonna change our header a little bit. We're gonna improve it. The first thing we need to do is we need to change the width to 100 pixels. The next thing we're gonna do is gonna give it a padding of five pixels. Then we're gonna give it a bottom margin. of 1em. Now we're gonna go back to our index.html file and we're gonna add another div. This div is gonna be called welcome message and it's gonna contain a single span element and in the span element we will simply say welcome to my web site. Now we copy this In our index.scss, we go below the buttons. We type hashtag the name of the ID, open closed brackets. We're gonna say color, and it's gonna be orange red. So we're using the uh, color from our wars.scss file now. We're gonna align it to the center. We give it a margin top of 10 pixel. We're gonna give it a bold, so we say font, weight, we say bold. And we're gonna give it uh, a better, um, larger size. So we say font size 1.7 em. Beautiful. Now we're gonna add an image to the background of our body. So first, what we need to do is we need to create a new folder. We're gonna call it the source folder. Search. And inside it, we're gonna say new folder and we're gonna say image. Then simply use whatever image you like and put it in the image folder. I'm just gonna put one I already have there. So I have my image here. Then go above here, type body, open and close the brackets. Then you're gonna type background image, URL. Now we type dot dot and we go to search image background we save it now we're gonna add the transparency to the image of our header div so this is the color of our header we're gonna simply go, go to the wars scss file and this is our color so move your mouse here and this thing is the slider for the transparency. So simply move this a little bit below, save it. And as you can see, it looks much nicer now. Welcome back. In this lesson, we will give a basic shape to our body section so we can see it, and we will make our footer. In the next lesson, we will fill the body section with data. So the first thing we need is a div element in our section with the ID body. So we're gonna simply add that. We're gonna say div and we close it. Now we're gonna give it an ID and the ID will be body inner. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ID of a body, copy it, go to our index.scss file. We go below the header because that was our first section. We are targeting a section with the ID of uh, body then we open and close it and we're targeting body inner that's the div that we just created now we're gonna say margin zero auto to center it but first we need to give it a width of 80 percent it's gonna have the uh, mean height 
of 400 pixels it's gonna be background color so we can see it that's good. color is gonna be blue for now it's gonna have a margin top it's gonna be hmm, 2 em maybe more let's give it four it's gonna have a border one pixel solid black it's gonna be rounded so we're gonna give it a radius mm, let's give it 10 I guess that, that, that's fine now we're gonna change this color it's not gonna be blue anymore it's gonna be the color we used for the header in our first uh, section so it's this one and it will out this will automatically make it transparent as well because you're using the variable from here and this is this is this color and it basically has a transparency on it so you're just gonna replace this with that yeah, and right now we have transparency on our div and we can see it, how it looks. That is going to be the area which we will fill with the data the next, uh, in the next lesson. Now we're going to give the animation to our border. So we're going to say animation name. And we're going to use the animation name that's box shadow. We're going to say animation duration. 3 seconds and we're gonna say animation iteration count is gonna be infinite save that and now our border on our second section has an animation now we go back to our index uh, to our index.html file and we're gonna make our footer so basically for the footer we need a div in our section as well we're gonna make a div close it we're gonna we're gonna give it an id it's gonna be footer div so we copy this we go back to our index.scss file we go below this one now we're targeting the last section so we target first the footer open and close it then we target the how did we call it footer something footer div now we target that one open and close it now we're gonna repeat the same process as we did with the second one we're gonna give it a width we're gonna say it percent again we're gonna center it again We're gonna give it a minimal height and it's gonna be 200 pixel we're gonna give it a color so we can see it uh, might as well use this actually we're gonna use this one for now no that's too large so let's see 3 em that's too small. Forium. Yeah, that's fine. We it needs a top margin, so margin top. It's gonna be three M. Oh, four. Let's give it four. It's gonna have rounded borders. So first we give it a border. One pixel solid black. We give it a rounding so it's border radius mm, 10 pixels. That's fine. Uh, might as well give it the same animation. We give it the dura same duration and the same iteration count. 
we don't have to, but it's uh, it's up to your preference. Now we change the color to transparent. So basically we just copy this one. Now that we have our footer prepared, we need to put some data in it. And for that, we are going to be using a P element. P is for paragraph, so simply type P in our footer div. Open and close it. Inside, you can type whatever you would like to appear. I will just type this. Now this text that I put in, we need to style it with CSS. And we, for that, we don't need any uh, IDs or anything. We will be just using this P element. So go to your index.css file, go to your uh, footer div, and inside it is where your p element is contained. So type p, open and close this, then type color, for example, color red, and you can check that you have the correct element, and we do. Now simply change the color from the color red to our variable, so to orange red. Now we want to uh, center it, so we need to text align it text align center. We want to give it a weight, so it's bold. Let me say bold. And we want to uh, give it a bigger size, so you say font size. And it's going to be 1.3 em. That's nice. Welcome back. In this lesson, we will be adding AngularJS to our index.html file, and we will be making routes so we can fill the body section that we made previously with data. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import scripts for AngularJS and Angular routes. So we go to this website, and we simply search AngularJS. We click the first one. We take this, we copy it, copy the script tag, then we go back to our application. We go below the link and we paste the script. Then we go back to the website and we're gonna search for the AngularJS routes. And we take this one, we simply copy the script and it's important now that this uh, script is below the first one. So we simply go below this one, paste it, and that's that. Before we start working with Angular, with the scripts we just imported, we're first going to create four new pages. And that's because we're going to be using those pages to switch content in our div. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it routes. And because I have uh, four buttons, I'm going to make four HTMLs. And uh, you can call them however you want. I'm just going to call the first.html. And I'm going to say just the P element. And it's going to be, this is the first page. Now I'm going to create another one. Second.html. I'm going to say P this is the second page. Now we're going to make about the contact page. So contacts, contact.html. I'm going to say P. This is the contact page. And I'm going to make the about me page. About me.html. Now don't worry, because I'm just using the P tag, you can literally put anything you want in here. I will show you that later. That HTML. And now we can just type P. This is the About Me page. And we need a default page. Also, you can call it the home page. And none of these options are uh, selected. This will be the default one. So it's just say default.html. And we will say P. This is the default page. 
Now the next thing we need to do is we need to change how our buttons are structured. So we need the A tag. So first remove this and select A tag. This is going to be our first page. This is going to be our second page. This is going to be our third page. Now this is actually be our contact page. And this is going to be the about me page. So about me. Now we need to give the graphs a name by which we will uh, route it later. So we'll simply type first, second, con contact, and this one will be about me. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add a div inside the inner body. And it's going to have the ng view on it. And this, is, this will be the location where all the data will be filled from our routes. So the next thing we are going to do is we, we're going to go to the body. And in our body, we're going to move this and say ng up. And we're going to call it something. We're going to call it my web page. Now we're going to make our script. So we type var up equals angular.module. This is the name of our app. Then we say it requires ng route. We close it up dot config function then we're going to use the variable Then we're going to say it's going to use the template and that's our HTML file that we made, our HTML files that we made. And this one is going to be routes uh, first.html. Now we have three more, so we have a van. And this one is going to be second. template URL, it's going to be routes second.html, the third one, and it's called, uh, what's it called? The third one is called uh, first, second, contact, so it's on contact. template URL and it's gonna be routes contact .html. second to last one about me template URL, it's going to be routes about me.html and we need the default one, that's the one that will be called whenever uh, the page is first loaded because we didn't click any of the buttons yet, so we type otherwise, otherwise 
template URL and this one is gonna be routes default yeah we call it that default dot html now after we have made our script our routes are working but before we check them we're just gonna make a small change in the index.scss file because we moved the uh, we changed the p element we put a in it so it's now the css is not correct so we're just going to change this this a little bit we go to our index.scss file we scroll down to where our buttons are so we have the p tag and inside our p tag now is the a tag so we type a we open and close this and we're going to say uh, color is going to be orange red and we're going to change it so it doesn't have the um, the underline so we're going to say text decoration they are going to say none now we can actually go to our um, web page I'm just going to enlarge it and as you can see there are no errors and this is the text that is loaded by default and when we click the first page, it will say this is the first page. When you click the second page, it will say this is the second page. And the same as for the other ones. So in the next lessons, we will be filling these pages with content. And you will see how flexible this really is. In this lesson, we will make the HTML structure of the contact form. And in the next one, we will make the CSS. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go to my contact.html file. I'm going to make a form. Choose post. We can leave this empty for now. We're going to give it an ID. I'm going to say contact form. Uh, we're going to give it a name. Open. Close this. We're going to set field, field set. In this, we're going to set the legend. This is going to say now we're going to make a div. In our, in our first div, we will have the div for the label and the input field so we're gonna make two divs we're gonna make the first uh, div for the label and we get it, we're gonna give it a class label label for first name title Enter your first name. Enter your first name. Now we're going to make another one. This is going to be an input of text, so it's input input type text we're gonna limit it we're gonna set a placeholder
There, this one is done. Now we need uh, another div for the last name. We again need the label, so we need another div. The class is the same as the first one. Now we need another div. Input type text, placeholder text is gonna be last name. Tab index is when the user when the user is hitting the tab button. So the first uh, time you hit the user hits the tab, it will be tab index 1, then tab index 2, and so on. If max length will be 40. Now we scroll down. Let's see what we need else. We need an email and we need a subject. So we're gonna make a div for the email. Div is gonna have a label, so we need another div for that. With the class of label because uh, all the labels we will uh, use CSS later to sort so we just uh, can apply the same CSS to multiple elements label for email your email Now we need a div. Input type is going to be text. No, actually, never mind. My mistake. Input type is going to be email. Input type email. Name here email. ID is email. Title is going to be enter your title, your email address, placeholder is going to be email. The tab index will be free, and maximum length will be 70. And we need just two more, so we need the for the subject what the user will be sending us. So we need a div for that. And we're gonna put another div and we're gonna say this is the class label. Label for subject. And title is going to be enter the subject, subject, uh, 
then we need a div and then we need input type text placeholder is subject 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 tab index will be 4 title will be enter subject required length will be 70 uh, required maximum length will be 70 right, max length will be 70 name is subject ID is subject now we need another field set we're gonna call this one ID field set 2 it's gonna have a legend again so legend is gonna be right right to me it's gonna have text area name subject long form id will be text area contact text area contact it will have yeah, for the 10 that's fine now we say placeholder enter your your message here tab index will be 5 maximum length will be 2000 so max length will be 2000 title your message goes here text area now we need an input we'll type submit it's gonna be tab index 6 with the ID of uh, submit actually let's just put this in the div by itself as well so we take this we cut it we put it in here and it's much better so this is our contact form i'm gonna switch to chrome so this is how our contact form looks for now but uh, in the next lesson we will format it properly with the css before we move on to CSS, uh, we need to fix a small error. So this is value, uh, and that's the error. So simply change it to tab index, and it will be fine. All right, let's make the CSS for our forms. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to give this a class, and we're going to call it form fields. The same class we will give to the other field set. So scroll down, give it a class, and paste this. Now we copy this, we go to our index.scss file, we scroll all the way down below everything, we type dot for the class name, we open and close it, then we can say text align center. That will move our that will move all our data in the middle. We can say width, it's gonna be 80% of the parent. Then we say margin zero auto now we're gonna give it a top and a bottom margin so top margin top is gonna be 2 em margin bottom is gonna be 2 em now uh, we're gonna give it a border as well it's gonna be one pixel solid and it's gonna be 
orange red now we're gonna give it a radius of 10 pixel that's nice now we're basically done with the foreign fields so we're gonna go with foot on the legend so we type a legend we open and close it color it's gonna be black uh, font weight is gonna be bold font size is gonna be 1.3 em and that's looking really nice now for the label that's the class that we made in our in the previous part we're gonna see color orange red we're gonna say font size 1.3 em now we're gonna go back to our contacts.html file and we're gonna give a class to the to the input types so we're gonna say class input I'm just gonna copy this we're gonna put it here 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 and that's that are you gonna go back to our index.scss file are you gonna say dot input open and close it we're gonna say border one pixel uh, two pixels solid um, blue violet okay now we're gonna see the width is gonna be 100% um, let's say it's gonna be 80% now we're actually gonna go back and change something. Uh, the contacts.html file. This one will be renamed to input2. So simply delete the input class and let it be input2. Now we go back to our index.scss file. We put dot input2. Open and close it. Copy this. Put it here. Now we're for this one. This is the first five, first uh, four input fields. We're gonna say it has the height of uh, 50 pixels. Oof, that's too large. So we say 25 pixels. It seems about right. And it's gonna have uh, rounded borders. So we see border radius is gonna be 10 pixels. That's too much. Five pixels. That's fine. So this, we do the same with the second one. We do the border radius of five pixels. And now it's looking much better. One last thing before we finish with our form, we're going to give an ID to the submit button and we're going to change the look of it. It's just we're going to type submit. And we're going to use that in our index.scss file to change the shape of the submit button so we just go in the form fields we go all the way below we type submit we open and close it we say width 81 percent save it now we're gonna say uh, border one pixel solid uh, blue violet Two pixel, two pixel. And now we're gonna give it uh, a radius. 
of 5 pixels and we're gonna give it the height of 25 pixels and it's looking pretty cool now the last thing we're gonna need to do in order to make our form function is we're gonna need to go to our website and this is the website formspree.io slash forms and you're gonna need to create a new form in there it's free to use so we're gonna create a new form now this is all you need the endpoint so copy that and below you have some examples how to make the form if you don't know how now we go back to our visual studio we go to our contact.html I put uh, a reminder here for you. Now we just uh, replace this endpoint. This, this will be empty for you. So the endpoint you got from the website, you simply put it here and save it. Then we, when we go back to our website, we can just simply, let's just refresh this so we can type something here. It doesn't really matter what. And when you click submit, the form was sub submitted successfully. And that means on the email that you registered with, you will receive the email from the form. And simply you can go back to the page from which it was sent. Now, since the form is complete and we finished styling it and it works, you can receive messages from it. Uh, I have updated the materials for uh, this lesson. Welcome back. In this lesson, we will be filling the content of our pages. In the first page, we're going to be filling is the first page. So we simply go to our first.html. And now simply we're going to make a div. And inside it, we'll make two divs. And we're going to give this divs class. The first day will be called image first. It will have a class of image first. The second one will be content first. So class content first. And the main div will have a class of first page. Now we go to our index.scss file. We go all the way down below and we type dot first page. That's our main div. We open and close it. We say mean height. It's going to be 200 pixels. We say width. It's going to be 98%. We say margin zero auto to center it. Now we're going to give it a top and a bottom margin. Actually, before that, let's just make uh, make it so we can see it. We're going to type a dot image first. That's the class. That's the first div in our main div. We say background color. We're going to say, let's say, blue. We're going to give it the height. It's going to inherit the height. That's the first div. Now we're going to do the same for the second one. Dot content, content first. That's the second div. We're going to give it a background color. And it's going to be green. Now we're going to give it a minimal height again. So we can see it. It's going to inherit the height. Now we're going to uh, float the first div left. But we're going to change it so that the first div is only 30% with 30%. Nice. Now we have uh, both divs in a single uh, in a single line, in a single row. Now we're going to give the margin to our main element. So we're going to say margin top. It's going to be 2em. 
that's too much, so I'll put it at one. And we're gonna give it a bottom margin as well, because you will see in a second. Bottom margin, bottom one em. This is not immediately seen, but you will in a second. Now we go back to our um, first that HTML page. In this div that we created, we simply copy it. And now you will see the magic of classes. Let's copy it two times and save it. And now we have three elements in which we can fill with content in our first page. Now we will simply um, change the colors. So first we go to our words.css file where our variables for colors are. And so we'll say, this will be our div one color and it will be RGBA. So it will have a transparency. We type 41, uh, 195, 241 and the transparency will be 0 0.349. That's the first one. So the second one will be div two color and it will be RGBA as well. And we will type one, uh, one, two, six, one, two, five, two, zero, zero point one three seven. Let's do it like that. And we close it. Now we need to use this color. So we go back to our index.sjss file. And in here we type the name we just made, so that's the div one color. Check it, yeah. And now we change the second one, that's the div two color. Save it. And now we have a nice transparency effect on our divs. Now let's give our border a radius. We're gonna change the border of this one, of the main div. So we type border radius. And it's gonna be five pixel. And we're gonna need to give it a border as well. So border one pixel solid black. Yeah, it's looking nice. And we change the blacks into the our variable black. So it uses it from the SCSS. All right, now we're gonna fill the content. So the left div, the first one will be an image and the right div, the second one will be some text. So first we go to our first.html file. And in our first div, we're gonna put an image. Uh, but before that, we need to make a image we need to add images so we go to a search a folder we right click it we reveal it in explorer and in there you will put some images so i will put some now there we go i'm just gonna be using cats but <laughs> um we type image image source is the Press Control Space, then go back, then go to Search to Image to Cat One for me, but to you, you can be whatever. The Alt, we just type this is Cat One, Cat One, and we save it. Now, don't worry about the size that will change after we make some changes in the SCSS, and that's perfectly fine. So, we just go to the second one, we type Image. This one will be the same. Put a third set of images to cat2 and then say this is cat2. Now we're gonna go to the third one. Then you're gonna say image source. We go back, we go to third set of images to cat3. We're gonna say this is cat3. Now we have an image tag inside our first div, so we can simply use this image to uh, to make the size of our cats the proper size. So we go to our index.scss file. Now in order to fix the size of our cats, we're gonna type in the image tag, 
with 100% and we're gonna type height of 200 pixels and our cats are fixed and if we resize the screen you will see that the cats are scaling properly now we're gonna put some content in our right div that's the content first div but before we do that we need to change this to display flex now we go to our first.html file and we're gonna put uh, two paragraphs here so the first paragraph type p in the content first div and we're gonna type lorem for the fake dummy latin text then we're gonna type hr for a break and then we're gonna type another p and type lorem again so this will basically be our two texts that we describe our little cat with and we can repeat this for the other two so simply copy this text and put it in the content first of the second div in the content uh, first of the last div and now we have our cats described and of course you can style this however you want i'm just making an example here so now we're gonna make the text look a little bit nicer so we have the p element inside of our second div and this is our second div so type p open and close it then type text align left then below that we're gonna give it uh, padding padding is gonna be left and it's gonna be one em now uh we're gonna give it a color but before that let's go to our wars.css file and we're gonna make a color for the cats so we're gonna say this is our cat text color and it's gonna be rgb rgb okay and we save it then we go back to our uh, uh, to our index.css file we're gonna say color and it's gonna be that one as a variable and now it's looking much nicer and we simply save this now that we have made our cats page we need to make our second page and we need to make our about me page about me page we will make from scratch but for the second page we will use the classes that we already have in the first page so the first step is to go to our uh, second.html and we delete this. Now we need the same divs, so we need one div, we need two more divs, and the classes will be the same as the ones we used in the first page. So copy the classes, the first page will be the main div. So this is the class, then we will have the exactly the same classes on the two other divs copy this as well now in our first uh, div we need an image and before that we need to uh, get some images so go to our uh, resource file of reveal it in explorer and now you need to copy some images there and i already have some prepared so just give me one second there i have updated my images now i'm just gonna type the location of the images and this is gonna be dog one <laughs> and the reason I'm using dogs now is simply to demonstrate that you can use um, you can make other pages with the same structure and because you're using the same classes as the first page the CSS will be correct and we don't have to edit a lot of stuff it will simply work but for the about me page we will make a, a page from scratch with its own custom CSS so simply type lorem here like we did in the first one and we're gonna now we need an HR again, and we need another lorem. Now simply copy this, I paste it two times, 
and uh, change this. It's not, no longer dog one, it's now dog two. And we change it to dog two. And this one is gonna be dog three. And we change it to dog three. Now let's go to our website and see how exactly this changed. So this is our cats page. Now if you go to our second page and click it, we have our dogs and we have it formatted properly and we didn't change anything in our uh, SCSS file. So if we keep switching before from cats to dogs, you will see that everything is working fine because we're following the same CSS structure. But if you want to make the About Me page custom, we need to make that from scratch. Now we need to make our About Me page. And so first we need a div. Then we need two more, but we want to be using the same classes. This is just simply for convenience sake. Uh, the first div will only have an image of us. So I'm using my own image, but of course you use your own. Uh, search so image me. I'm going to say this is me. Now we're going to have an H1 tag here for headline. Of course, you change the actual content of this later to whatever you want. H2 will be, actually, let's make this H3 so it's smaller, sub headline. Then you can uh, give yourself a description here. So with AP, we say lorem. This will be one short paragraph, then we make another paragraph, simply, simply type lorem again, and we save it. And now we need to go to our, um, we first we need to give this some class. So this is going to be class image. Actually, this is going to be the ID because we're only using it once. This is going to be ID. And uh, we're going to say about me ID. Uh, this div will have an ID of about me and uh, this div will have an ID of uh, about me content. Now we save this. Now that we have made our HTML for the about me page, we need to style it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the index.css and let's see how it looks before we add CSS to it. So for now you can only see the top of my head, but that will soon change. The first thing we need to do is we need to use the ID that we gave to our uh, main div. So the, that's the about me div. You open and close it. Then inside we have the about me ID div. So that's the first div about me ID. And we open and close that one. And we have another div. That's the about me content, about me content, and we open and close that one. So in our first div, we have the image. In our second div, we have the content. And uh, this div is the container for both of them. So first we're going to say uh, for the image, which is going to be 30%. And then we're going to have the margin zero out to center it. Now in our um, first div, we have the image. So we type image, we open and close it. Now the width is going to be 100%. The height is going to be 400 pixels. The board will we'll give the image a border. So border will be one pixel solid and we'll use our, our own variables black. Uh, then we will um, give a margin to the whole div. So margin will be 1 EM. Then we will text align the center. Now we will go to the second div. And in the second div we have the P element so the, for the paragraph. So we will open and close that. We will text align it left. Then we will ident the text, so we type text ident. And it will be 2 em. And we will enlarge the size of the text, so we say font size. And it will be 20 pixel. And it's looking relatively nice now. 
Now we're gonna make some finishing touches to our website. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a custom font. And for that, we need to go to Google. And we're gonna search Alert to Stencil in Google Fonts. And after you find it, you copy this link first. You copy this. Then you go back to your Visual Studio code. And you paste it above the Angular. Paste it and save it. Then we go back to the website. And we need to copy this. Now we go back to our Visual Studio code. And we go to index.scss. And we're going to say in our body, it's going to be font family. And you just paste this and delete the font family. Delete the extra. Save it. And now if we go to our web page, as you can see, uh, our website is using the new font. It's the alert stencil. And if we want to be, if we want to make it to use our own variable, we just copy this. We copy this, we go to ours, we say uh, main font, we paste this, now we go back to index.stss and we say main font instead of this. We make the, we put the symbol and we close it and save it and it's the same thing. All right, now we're gonna make uh, the default page. That will be the first page that shows when our website loads. And we're gonna, to do that, we're gonna first go to default.html and we're gonna create a div. And it's gonna get the ID of welcome div. And inside it, we will have an h1 tag. It will say welcome to my website. Of course, you can change it to whatever you like and add elements as well. So H3 will be pick an option above. And then we're just going to get a P tag as well. And the P tag will have some dummy text for now. And we can add another one, another P tag. Now that we have made our default HTML page, we need to style it in index.scss. And for that, we need to target the div. So we target the div and the div name is welcome div. We open and close it. Then we text align everything in it to center, all the text. Then we say it will have a margin of 2 em. And the text will be, uh, the p text will be aligned left. Now it looks pretty nice. And of course, you change uh, it to something you like. Now we're going to give a box shadow animation to our main divs. And for that, first we need to go to our words.stss file and we need to make uh, new colors. So we're going to say this is box shadow one color. And then we're going to Say this is going to be RGBA and it's going to be 88, 9, 53, and we're going to give it a transparency of 0.5 and save that one. And the second color is going to be box shadow, box shadow color 2. And we're going to give it RGBA. And it's going to be 34, 17, 143. And it's going to have one 0 0.7 transparency. And we save that one. The next thing we need to do is we need to make a, we need to go to our keyframes and make the animation. So we're going to say add keyframes. And we're going to call it the box shadow two. You can call it whatever you like, you don't need to follow this. Then from 0%, it's gonna do something. Then from, from 0 to 50, it's gonna do this. And from 
from 50 to 100, it's gonna do this. So what what do we want to do? We want to make the we want to change the box shadow. So we say box shadow, and it's gonna be five pixel. And the first color is named uh, box shadow one color. So we paste that here. Then we say the second one box shadow. The same. Except it's a box shadow two color now. And the last one is going to be box shadow. Yeah, this one this, this is fine. Just add the markers. Save this. Now we have the name of our animation. We copy this. We go to our index.sss file and we find the location where we want to put this. So for example, I want to put this in the second uh, div. So for that, we find the body. That's our second div. And we go to body inner and we say animation name. Animation name. And we paste it. Then we say animation duration. Animation duration. Three seconds and then iteration. It's going to be infinite. Let me save that and let's see what happens. And as you can see, our second div has a nice little uh, uh, animation going on now. Now, this animation that we just made, I want to use on two more locations, but I don't want to type it every single time. So we're just going to create a new file. But first, we copy this. The new file is going to be called underscore mixins.scss. Now, in that, File we uh, we say at mixing and we give it a name. In that file we in that uh, mixing we paste this and save it. Then we copy this. We go back to our index.scss. We scroll all the way up and we say at import and we import the file that we just created so that the uh, SAS knows that we have that uh, name there. We go mixins. And we close this. Now we say we go back to where our animation is, and instead of this, we say include at include uh, box shadow two, and we close it. And it will have the same exact effect as we uh, as if we uh, type this every single time because this basically just copies this text from the uh, mixins to here. So we can just simply copy this in locations that we want, and those uh, elements will get these properties. So for example, let's uh, find the uh, header, and we go below this, and we paste it here, and we save it. And now header has the same animation. And now let's go to our footer, our footer div, and let's paste it below here and save it, and now our footer has anim animation. All right, now what I want to do is I want to make it every single page the exact same size. And in order to do that, we need to change the second div. We need to limit it because that is the div that gets filled with content, and it's the only one. So if we limit that div, every single thing will be fine. So we go to our um, inner body, that's our second div. We, we need to type min height. Is going to be 700 pixels and mean uh, max height is also going to be 700 pixels and now we need to do one more thing we need to put an overflow overflow is going to be not hidden it's going to be scrollable so whatever goes over the limit uh, will be able to we, we will be able to see it just it will have a scroll bar so we save this and now as you can see my page has a scroll bar scroll bar because it goes over the limit. But if we go to other pages, this one doesn't have a scroll bar because it fits within the content. And if you go to the second page, this one has it. But however, every single page is the exact, exact same size now. And that is what we wanted to do. Now one more thing, we're gonna simply add the animation, the same one we did for the divs to the buttons. 
So in order to do that, we simply need to find the buttons and here they are. So we go to the P element and we go here and we paste the include box shadow two and we save it. In our buttons have the animation as well. Now what I want to do is I want to add an animation to the welcome message of my header, this one. So in order to do that, we need to locate it first and it's located in index.html. It's the span element inside this div. So we copy this div ID and we go to index.css. So we find the header inner and inside that it's the uh, welcome message ID. So we need to make it header inner. Uh, here it is. So inside that element, we have the span element. And on the span element, we're just going to check it to see if we have the correct one. We're going to color it to green. And we do. So just delete this. Now what we need to do now is we need to go to our keyframes.css. And we're going to copy this one. We're going to call it something else. We're going to call it the color welcome text anim. We're just going to change this. It's not border color. It's just color now. So simply delete the border part. Save it, then copy the name of this. We go to mixings. We're going to make a new mixing. For that, we're going to copy this name because that's our keyframe. We copy this, paste it, name it color welcome text anim. And then simply cut, cut this and paste it as the name here and copy the name of the mixing and we go to index.scss and in our span element we simply say at include and we paste the name paste the name of the animation of the mixing and save it and our website has the animation on the span element in the header and now we're going to apply the same animation to the footer of our web page so we simply need to find the footer in our index.scss and here it is and in our footer we same have a let's see in our footer we have the single p element that so that's fine so it's this one and inside it we just simply say it include this save it you know if you go to our website our footer will have the animation our text in the footer will have the same animation all right, in this lesson, I will show you how to host your website for free on GitHub, and it's relatively simple to do. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to have the account on GitHub, and now you're going to need to copy your username. Then we go to the application from GitHub, the GitHub desktop application that we installed all the way back, and we're going to need to create a new repository, and we call the repository our username dot GitHub dot io and that is very important we need to call it exactly like this and we can put it on desktop yeah let's put it on desktop we just find create repository Now we wait a little bit. Now it's done, it's created the repository on our desktop. So we copy the files from our uh, last course that has our index, style sheets, and all the other things we did. We open the repository that has the git attributes and it has the .git file that you cannot see at the moment because this doesn't show the hidden items. But here it is. And now simply copy the, uh, the files from our lesson in here. Replace this. Now we go to our uh, GitHub desktop application. We simply say push and we give a message of push. We commit it to main. Then after that is done, we simply push the repository. Now remember, the important thing is that your repository needs to be named your username.github.io. And you can only have one of these per, uh, per GitHub account. So 
when you create your GitHub account, make sure it's uh, some nice name. And we click push repository, uh, uncheck this, and uh, publish repository. Now you're going to need to wait a little bit for this to push the files. And it's done. And if you go to our history, you can see that uh, the files we just pushed. Now we need to go to the website. And we go to our account. We simply type ben hosting test dot github dot io. And here it is. Our website is live on the internet. And if we enlarge this, you can see that uh, all the things still work. If you click the first page, it will load our page. If you click the second page, it will load it correctly the contact page about me and everything works perfectly fine. So remember, the important thing is to name your uh, uh, your repository the same as your username and then that's pretty much it. And simply uh, push that to that account, to that address and it will be fine. Now, in order to host our website with Firebase, it's a little bit more complicated. First, we need to have an account on Firebase. So simply create one if you don't have it. Then we're going to create a new project. We're going to call it um, and click Continue. Continue. Default account. Create, account. create project. Now you just need to wait for this to finish. And after it finishes, it will say the project is ready and we click continue. Now that we are in our Firebase uh, project, we simply click on hosting. We go to how do I get started. Then we need to download the CLI. So we click this. We download it for Windows. And we simply download this binary file. Now I already have it, so I'm just going to switch to my file. So simply run this as an administrator. Say yes. Now it will check that you actually have a Firebase account. Yeah. Now, after this is done, you type Firebase init. This will initialize the folder as a Firebase folder. So yes. Now we select, we want hosting. So this is what we want to do. So press space and click enter. Uh, use, an ex the, uh, use the project that we just created. So I'm going to use an existing project. I'm going to use the Udemy hosting test project. So I click enter, say yes, uh, public, <laughs> my bad. Uh, yes, click to this. Now, no. And this is completed the initialization. Now we need to do is uh, we need to copy the files we created into this public folder here. So I'm just going to go to my course and I'm going to my personal website. That's the from the last lesson. So we simply copy this. Uh, we copy it without Git attributes. We don't need that. So copy it, copy it like this. Now we paste it inside here. Replace the yes. And now we say git uh, Firebase deploy. And now whatever is in our public uh, folder will be deployed to our project. Yeah, and you see the URL is right here. So if you just simply copy this, and we go to our web browser, and we paste it in here. You will see our website is live on and it's being hosted by Firebase. And it really is as simple as that. And you will see that it functions as well, same as the with GitHub. Hello, guys. Uh, first, let me say congratulations on finishing the course. I hope you had fun with it. I had fun making it. 
this is my first course I ever made on Udemy and hopefully I will make many more. If you have any suggestions on what you would like for me to make, you can contact me on any of my uh, social media or on my website, which I will link in this lesson. Um, if you want me to update something in this uh, course, feel free to contact me again. I will do it gladly. And uh, thank you once again for sticking to the end and finishing the course.